Hello and welcome to Law and More. My name is Kate Ryan and I'm a partner in the family team at IBB Law. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing the court process and what the alternatives to the court process are for those people that are going through a divorce or a relationship breakdown. The family justice system, for want of a better word, can often be described as relatively clunky. There's a lack of funding and has been for a number of years, which has resulted in court closures and a reduction to the court staff. The result of this is that there is a lack of availability to the public, those people that need assistance on the telephone or in person. There were issues uh, that were common before, but these uh, are now even more prevalent given the challenges that we face with the pandemic. The last two years have clearly shaped our daily lives in a way that has changed the way we work forever. When the first lockdown was announced, the court system reacted swiftly, holding hearings remotely where they could, and although not ideal, adjourning other hearings to later dates. Further down the line to where we are today, remote hearings are very common. In fact, hearings held face-to-face are quite rare, reserved for those hearings where oral evidence is necessary, such as fact-finding hearings in children cases, or where a judge specifies that this is necessary. I found certain courts operate in different ways, irrespective of the norm. For example, after the lockdown in April 2021 came to an end, the Uxbridge County Court continued to hold face-to-face hearings, while most other courts were only operating remote hearings. So, what are the current problems facing solicitors and lay clients? Well, first of all, it can take a substantial amount of time to obtain a date for a hearing. This can impact clients who have put their entire life on hold and are waiting for a resolution. They are often incredibly stressed and struggling to cope with the disruption of what's going on. In Children Act cases, they are supposed to be heard roughly within four to six weeks. Sometimes that's a struggle. Particularly where there are safeguarding concerns with regards to children, cases should and often are fast-tracked, although this can still take longer than is necessary. Secondly, there is a lack of judicial availability. There are unfortunately a shortage of good family judges in the system. This often leads to cases where there is no judge that is allocated, with the result being that the hearing has to be taken out of the court list for that day, which is often at very short notice. This is clearly devastating for clients who then face a further long wait for their hearing to be relisted. They also have had the expense of paying for their solicitor to prepare their case and often have also incurred the cost of their barrister's fees. Also, if the hearing is moved back because of a lack of judicial availability this is often at last minute and therefore fees are payable for the administrative costs incurred. These costs are duplicated on the next occasion when effectively the client has to do the whole thing all over again and there has simply been no progress. Thirdly there is a lack of staff and qualified support staff to assist with inquiries. There are now fewer people assisting with those calls being made to the court and hardly any availability for those walking into a court looking for some assistance. The effect of this is that urgent applications are not dealt with in a timely way or at all. The greatest impact of the delays in the court system are faced by those who are in relationships where they experience domestic violence. Those people in violent relationships will need urgent hearings and assistance often on the day. Currently, this is not possible. Not only do they not get a hearing to deal with the issues that they need, they then have to return home to a volatile situation and wait further time for a date for when they will be heard. And therefore, they are potentially putting themselves back into a dangerous situation where they are at risk of harm. Finally, the online system has had its teething problems especially the divorce process, where both parties are represented by solicitors. However, in the main, the online system is a welcome change for practitioners. We are now able to submit most forms online, such as divorce petitions and consent orders, and moving to the online system has seemed to ensure that documents are considered more swiftly. This, in turn, will support the client journey when people are going through a period of transition or a relationship breakdown that is very traumatic for them. 
I think that it's fair to say that the court system is not as efficient or as effective as we would like it to be. However, without a full overhaul of the system, this is not likely to change any time soon. I think that to support clients to achieve a resolution as quickly as possible for them in their circumstances, it is sensible to consider the alternatives that are available to them than having to go through the court process with its unwanted delays and its inevitable uncertainty. There are many alternatives to having to go through a formal court process and it's important that clients are aware of these options at the outset so they can consider what's best for them. One option is a private financial dispute resolution hearing. A financial dispute resolution hearing is the middle hearing in the court system and is often the most effective hearing because this is where parties usually settle. A private FDR is where the parties agree to pay a judge, which is a shared cost, to have effectively the same hearing that they would have at court, but outside of the formal process, which brings with it a huge amount of flexibility and ease. So the private FDR is equivalent to the second hearing in the system. Just to give you a little bit of information about how the FDR is so important in the court process... This is because it's a without prejudice hearing where parties are encouraged to negotiate and reach an agreement by consent, which is then embodied in a formal court order, allowing the parties to then move forward. So agreeing to arrange a private FDR is often sensible for parties that want to agree their own timetable at their own convenience with a degree of flexibility. All of these things are not possible when you're within the formal court process. You can pick a date for when you want to have your hearing, as opposed to having a date imposed upon them by the court. You can then change this date should you need to. Again, changing a court date if you're in the formal court process is incredibly difficult and you risk then putting off your hearing for months. One of the main advantages to this type of hearing is that you have your judge for the entire day. That one judge is only dealing with your case and they can completely focus on this and offer their help and support where necessary. This is often very helpful where the party's issues are relatively narrow. Having a private court hearing can often result in a much clearer and a better indication for them than having to sit in a courtroom before a judge with a full list who has sadly probably not had enough time to even read through the documents thoroughly to enable them to help the parties where they need to. Another alternative to the formal court process is arbitration. Arbitration is becoming very popular within family law because parties are able to agree a timetable, agree an arbitrator between them and have a decision known as a ward which is a final decision often on the day or shortly after the arbitration has been conducted. The advantage to this is that parties only have one hearing and the final award is a fully binding decision, enabling in a very short timescale for parties to be able to draw a line in the sand and move on. The costs of the arbitration are similar to those of a private FDR. They are usually shared and this is usually around £7,000. The final alternative to formal court proceedings is for parties to agree to attend mediation. This is where the parties meet with a qualified mediator who is an independent third party who helps to facilitate and support their discussions so that they can reach an agreement between them. A mediator is impartial. They are not there to advise the parties but are there to provide information to assist them overcoming any obstacles they may have in the course of their discussions. This option is a far less expensive route than formal court proceedings or the other two alternatives that we have discussed, but it is not suitable for everybody. Both parties have to want to engage in a discussion and voluntarily agree to attend mediation. Any agreement reached at mediation is not binding upon the parties until they have had this recorded, usually with the help of their solicitor, by having this agreement drafted into a legally binding document called a consent order. My final comment on this would be that with hearings being cancelled and often a lengthy wait for those hearings to then be relisted, the option of paying for a judge or an arbitrator privately can often be well worth the price if this enables parties to reach a resolution and move forward sooner than they would have been able to. 
So if you are going through a divorce or a relationship breakdown, then I would strongly suggest you consider these alternatives to having to go through the formal court process. So thank you for listening. If you would like to get in touch or find out any more information, then please do visit the website at ibblaw.co.uk. Thank you.